So I have this old issue of Historical New Hampshire here, and it has this wonderful article about Civil War nurse Sarah Lowe from Dover, New Hampshire. And I'm thinking, oh, I want to get to know her story of how she became a nurse. How can I bring her story to life? Oh, I know. I'll do a comics report with a visual toolbox of faces, action, setting, and text. I have all my regular comics making tools here at my desk, and I folded an 8.5 by 11 sheet of blank paper to make an 8 page book, and I'll just draw Sarah Lowe's story with little stick figures here in these pages. To do that, I'm going to go through this article and look for faces and actions that nurses and patients took in these Civil War hospitals, and I'll look for setting details from these Civil War hospitals in Washington, D.C., and I can even draw primary source texts from the article. These are the words that these people said and wrote at the time. Now when I start drawing, I'm going to leave the cover blank. I'll draw that last, and I'll come in here on page two and establish the setting. Summer 1862, my characters, sick and wounded soldiers. I can draw them from the illustrations by Winslow Homer here in the Historical New Hampshire article. And their action is they flood the hospitals at Washington, D.C. A couple setting details. It's crowded, it's dirty, it's hot. Here's my other character, page three. Superintendent of nurses Dorothy Dix must hire nurses to care for them, the patients. And I'll draw her kind of angry. You'll see why in a couple pages. Let's see, we can pull some of her actual words here. Uh, she said, no women under 35 years old, I'm paraphrasing, they must be matronly, neat, sober, industrious, etc., etc., and she's saying those words. We'll fix that spelling later. Now, next character, Nurse Stevenson doesn't get along with Superintendent Dix. Now, I don't know what Nurse Stevenson looks like, but she says that Superintendent Dix flies in on her hurried visits like one of the thousand shots of black cartridge popping off every hour around us. So I'll draw Nurse Stevenson as a regular stick figure, matronly nurse here. Nurse Dix is like a, a, an exploding shell bursting into the hospital and yelling at everybody. All right, now Sarah Lowe will make her appearance here on page five. Sarah Lowe writes from Dover, New Hampshire. She's not a nurse yet, but she's offering to see if she could be of any assistance in the ward. And Nurse Stevenson writes back, crowded with work, come at once. So we'll draw behind her a crowded ward with lots of beds, but they don't notify Dix. Now here we have face details, action, setting, and text, which is a lot of story packed into one page. Oh, important note, Nurse Lowe is only 32 years old at the time. Now on this next page, we have some explaining to do. What was it Nurse Lowe said? Um, they did not consult Miss Dix because they knew perfectly well she would say no. Okay, we can take that quote and work that in here. In fact, I think I'll show Sarah Lowe saying it. The reason Miss Dix was not consulted about my coming, they know perfectly well she would say no. And here she is traveling with her suitcase, her valise, on her way down to Washington, D.C. Of course, Dix finds out and makes a great hubbub. So here's Superintendent Dix with her sharp teeth shouting, no, 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 no. She doesn't want Nurse Lowe working as a nurse. She's berating the surgeon. The Assistant Surgeon General's solution? If you're a volunteer and not getting paid, Miss Dix is not the boss of you. That's not a direct quote, but it's approximately what they said. And Nurse Lowe says, I suppose this settles the matter. Now we're on page eight already here. This is going fast. Thus, Sarah Lowe begins her career as a volunteer nurse. I'll draw Sarah Lowe. I can't resist drawing this patient of hers in from the article. And I can't resist drawing Freeman Colby in because I'm pairing his story with Nurse Lowe's story in the book. She goes on to help hundreds of soldiers. I'll add my website. Now we can read back through these pages. We should add a front cover. Sarah Lowe, Civil War, volunteer. We need a title. We need an image. There she is. And we need an author's name. Mini comic by Merrick Bennett. And, oh, I should also cite my source. So this is Historical New Hampshire, volume 69, number one. Thanks, New Hampshire Historical Society. Now, didn't we have something to, ah, yes, spelling. So since I'm inking directly, I have to cut out a little strip of paper and glue stick that in to cover that word. And while we're at it, let's fix this. We need to emphasize that she's only 32 years old. So I'll bring that text out a little bit. And she's not matronly either, is she? All right, we'll just glue stick that onto the panel. And I think we're ready to go. 
Now I can read through the book like that, or I can open it up and make copies or send it to people to print. And now I'm ready to draw the rest of Nurse Lowe's story through 1864 and 1865 as it appears in the ongoing Freeman Colby Civil War Diary series. There's lots of great primary sources by Civil War nurses out there, so you can try your hand at drawing your own Civil War nurse story. And, you know, just to be fair, don't you think somebody should draw this story from Superintendent Dix's perspective? So special thanks to Nurse Lowe and all the brave volunteers who worked with her, and good luck to all the cartoonists who draw their stories.